<laughs> I am recreating a famous psychological experiment about the power of our thoughts and not thinking. But I'm going to tell you about this later because first I want to tell you about a different type of thinking. You see, unfortunately, most people who try to learn a language will fail. And the reason is not their ability, it is their mindset. Mindset controls everything, from your curiosity to learn, to your motivation to practice, to your interpretation of failure and fear. So, the question is, where does this mindset come from? Especially this negative mindset that stops you from being successful at learning a language. Well, ironically, it comes from the people who loved you most. The people who wanted you to succeed the most. It came from your parents and teachers. First, we need to talk about intelligence, and I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that intelligence is fixed, that some people are just born smarter? Or do you believe that intelligence is flexible, we get smarter through learning? Now, let's look at the difference in mindset between those two ways of thinking. Now, first, what is your goal when you're learning if you believe that intelligence is fixed? Well, your goal is to always look smart. Because if you look stupid, then obviously you are stupid and we can't change that. But if you believe intelligence is flexible, then your goal in learning is to learn so you can become smarter. What about failure? What does failure mean if you believe intelligence is fixed? Well, failure means that you're stupid. And since you were born stupid, well, there's nothing we can do about that. But if you believe intelligence is flexible, failure means you put in low effort. You didn't try hard enough. What about effort? What does it mean if you have to work really hard? in the classroom when you're learning. Well, if you have to work hard and you believe intelligence is fixed, well, again, it means you're stupid. Because if you were intelligent, well, you wouldn't have to work hard. It would be easy to learn. But if you believe that intelligence is flexible, then effort means you're learning. What about your strategy if you fail? If you get terrible marks in that exam, well, your strategy, if you believe intelligence is fixed, is to give up. Because, well, there's nothing you can do. You were born stupid, you failed the exam, that's it. But your strategy, if you believe intelligence is flexible, is to try harder, to improve. And finally, performance. What would happen to your performance in the future? if you fail. Well, if you believe intelligence is fixed, your performance gets worse and worse because you feel more and more stupid. But if you believe learning is flexible, then your performance just gets better and better as you develop your learning. Now, I hope you can see that having the mindset that intelligence is fixed is really negative. It's detrimental to your learning. But maybe you think that the decision between fixed and flexible is not so black and white. Maybe, of course, you can learn and intelligence is flexible, but, well, there's a part of it which is fixed. Some people are just born more intelligent than others. But now I want to show you just how dangerous it is to even believe a tiny bit 
That intelligence is fixed. In 1998, psychologists went into primary school classrooms and performed an experiment. First, they gave the children a puzzle, and the puzzle was quite easy, so all of the children could complete it. Then, they divided the children into groups. To some of those children, they told them, Wow! Well done! You must be really smart at puzzles. And to others, they told them, Wow! Well done! You must have worked hard at this puzzle. The difference was subtle but important. Some of those children were being praised for their intelligence, helping to create the idea that intelligence was fixed. But others were being praised for their hard work, helping to create the idea that intelligence is flexible. Then they gave them a second, more difficult puzzle, and most of the children could not complete it. And then they gave them a third and final puzzle, which was just as easy as the first one. Then when they analyzed their data, they realized that they had discovered something profound. The difference in praise had affected the children in four important ways. And the first one was performance. Those fixed intelligence children performed worse over time, but the flexible intelligence children performed better. Confidence. When they asked those fixed intelligence children why they failed at that second puzzle, they said it's because they were just no good at that type of problem. But those flexible intelligence children said they failed because they didn't try hard enough. Interest. When they asked those fixed intelligence children if they wanted to take a puzzle home and continue playing, they said no. The other group said yes. And finally, attitude. They gave the children a choice between two types of homework. One type of homework which makes you look smart but you don't really learn anything. And the second type of homework where you don't necessarily look smart, but you learn a lot. Those fixed intelligence children chose that homework where you don't really learn. And those flexible intelligence children, they didn't care if they looked stupid, they wanted to learn. incredible to think that those kind words of praise from your parents and teachers might be having such a profound effect on your English learning, on your performance, your confidence, your interest and your attitude. So here's a fact that I really want you to know and understand. Intelligence is not something that you are born with. Intelligence is something that you earn through hard work. You are not good or bad at learning a language. You are good or bad at doing the hard work. And you really need to accept that to have the right mindset to succeed at learning a language. And that brings us back to the bell. In 1987, a group of researchers performed a fascinating experiment. They asked volunteers to think of whatever they wanted except for a white bear. But if they did think of a white bear, they had to ring a bell. 
Then, after they finished, they told them that now they could think about whatever they want, including a white bear. But if they thought of a white bear, again they had to ring the bell. And they discovered that when they asked those volunteers not to think about the white bear, they were ringing the bell all the time. This is a paradox of human thought suppression. The more we try not to think of something, the more we think about it. Now, think about the effect this could have on your confidence, on your learning, on your ability to have a conversation. If you're thinking that your grammar is not perfect and your pronunciation is bad, and you're nervous and afraid, if you try to suppress those thoughts, it's going to have the opposite effect. It's going to be there in your mind all the time. It's much better to just accept that you will make mistakes, that your English isn't perfect, and just let it go. I want to tell you about one final experiment. In 1968, a group of researchers went into a classroom and selected some students at random. And then they went to the teacher and said, Teacher, you see those students there? Those students have the potential to do amazing things. Now, those students had been randomly selected. There was nothing special about them. But at the end of the year, they showed remarkable gains in achievement. But why? The difference was that they believed. Now, I already believe in you. I know that you can do whatever you want. And if you want fluency in English, you can have it. And now I invite you to believe in yourself. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.